Hi everybody, I just wanted to give you an introduction to what your digital classroom might look like. This is my example of my Key Stage 4 digital computer science classroom. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do once you've got your digital classroom is just to edit the stream. You should probably do this on all Google Classrooms that you have when you're actually using them. Is go to your settings and just make sure that you've got only teachers can post or comment. Um, you don't want students to be posting on there and to high notifications. That just means it will keep this a lot neater, so you're not going to have lots of different posts on there. On my classwork tab, you'll see I've got a series of different topics. So down the side, if you didn't know all the topics are there, these are all linked to my specification. I've decided that I'm going to go with a structure where I've got um, each topic from my GCSE specification as a new topic in Google Classroom, so it matches that perfectly. It then links to my PLCs as well, and then within that I've got a series of subtopics. So here I've actually only got three subtopics uh, within systems architecture, but I've decided I wanted to split that down a little bit more. Uh, I felt like I need to spend some more time on some of these different topics, so actually I've come up with more, more subtopics. Each one of these is just a material. So when you're creating it, you just need to create a material by clicking this one here. I'm going to show you inside a couple of them. So first of all, this is my embedded systems one. So at the top, I put my key learning here. Uh, I put that for the students so they kind of have an understanding of exactly what it is in this topic that they need to know. And they need to know the purpose and characteristics of embedded systems and give examples of them. So. In here, I've put the materials which I think will help the students the most. I've not put 100 different links. I've really kept that down to a couple because I want that to be real quality and I know we don't want to bombard the students with that. So I put a video here from YouTube. It's from a series of teachers who do online teaching about computer science. And I decided in this instance that I think this video is better than the GCSE pod for computer science. It has a little bit more depth to it. So I've decided to add that one there. You can add a GCSE pod if you wanted to, and you can add YouTube materials. If you just click edit or the first time you see it, remember you can add materials just here. So. In the first wave, all you need to do is put any PowerPoints that you use so students can recover those and get to those at any point. It's a fantastic opportunity for students who have missed lessons um, or join the course late to actually go and get those materials. Um, they'll always be there and they'll act as a revision resource as well. So all I've done is just uploaded a PowerPoint that I use. It's supposed to be a material, so remember we're not, a set we're not setting assignments here. Um, so it shouldn't, you can have questions in it if it was just a PowerPoint, but we're not expecting students to submit anything at this point really. So with my video as well, I've decided to put some exam questions in. Now I've got a nice tool called OCR Exams Builder. I know that lots of different exam boards have different tools to help you do this. So I've pulled down some questions. It doesn't mean that you can't go and print screen some questions from other exam papers. And I've just uploaded them. Um, I'm not asking students to complete those online. I'm not looking to give them feedback directly. Uh, at this point, we're just giving them the questions linked to this topic. Then what I've actually done is I've put a bit of a walkthrough on there as well. So my walkthrough is a video. It's showing how uh, I'd answer the questions, the pros, the cons, uh, the structure of the answers that I'm expecting so students can see that as well. Uh, and I've done that online you can do it with a visualizer that might be quite effective if you're actually writing and um, the way i've done it is i've just had a microsoft word document or a docs document i've just pasted in the exam questions and then i've just drawn text boxes to put my answers in that and i prepared that before i did it so the idea is that the students can go try the exam questions on the end of the exam questions i've actually put the answers but I think this is more powerful and will really support them. And that's what is expected of wave one. Uh, so if you're using anything like GCSE pod, you can actually uh, upload a video directly to Google Classroom. You can actually send them to a link on GCSE pod, but this is what it looks like. And when you click on that, it will take you to a sign in page. It doesn't look as neat. 
I think for me, I'm going to keep my pod videos when I use them directly inside here. So you can see here's my pod video. They can click on it and they'll be able to watch it. That's just processing because I've just done it at the moment, but it should just play as soon as they've done it. To do that, when you go into GCSE pod, if you want to find your pod, you just click on the side and you can download that and upload that directly onto Google Classroom. I've decided for this one, I wanted to use Quizlet. This topic here is really focused on keywords. So I've added a Quizlet just there again with my exam questions. When we're looking at wave two, you're going to be asked for a little bit more detail. So what I've done for that is I've created a walkthrough of each lesson. So if I just show you this, So it just, it's a walkthrough lesson giving a lot more detail about uh, exactly what, uh, like a revision lesson basically, so that they can re-watch that. And it's come directly from us. We can contextualise that and add in extra information that we want. There's a few different ways to do that. I chose to do this on PowerPoint. Here's my PowerPoint. You can do this as a screen recording if you want to. Um, but I think probably the easiest way to do this is just to add sound to each slide. And you can do that by clicking insert audio and just record it. It hasn't taken me long to do this to talk through my lesson. Once you've got audio on every slide or wherever you want your audio, if you click file and then export, you can create a video and it will create it automatically for you with transitions and everything else. You can download it directly or upload it rather onto Google Classroom. But I've decided that I'm going to make a YouTube channel so all my videos are in one place. Uh, it's up to you the structure that you want to do that. And if you want more information about how to make a YouTube channel, just let me know and I can show you how to do that. There are a few other things that you might put onto here um, in the second wave, which could be some form of assessment. At that stage, it's assessment with uh, feedback and that's what we're looking for and that's why you need to be thinking about how you're best going to do that that might be on google forms that might be on a different topic it might be quizzes it might be that students are submitting some form of assessment to you but i think the easiest way for me is using a google form remember that on a google form what you can do is you can create a google form directly and the power of google forms is that they automatically gives you feedback and you can direct students to resources if they're struggling um, when you're doing assessments in the future, you're linking this to your, if you're thinking about your PPEs, if a student's got a weakness in a certain topic, the idea is that you can set them an assignment directly for certain topics. It might be this computer systems topic where at the end there's an, an assessment where the students can then show their, in, their improvements and show their understanding. Uh, so it's everything in this package and the idea is this then will link to the revision schedule that the students will get at the end of the year. Remember everything's put into your class drive folder so if you ever wanted it as a package um, for a student let's say who hasn't got um, internet at home you could have all that package there as well and then you can quickly flip to the different topics just down here. So I've just started working on the systems architecture one uh, and then I'm going to move through my products as I go forward. If you do have any questions, please let me know, and hopefully that has helped.